I'm Anne. Hi, I'm Hannah. Hi, I'm Marie, and we are coming to you live from Austin, Texas, because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Hey, everybody, happy Wednesday. We're glad to be here. Are you guys glad to be here? Yes, <laughs> always, yeah. It is a beautiful fall day in Austin. Welcome coming off of our intense summer. As yes. usual. <laughs> so today, what did you guys, it was like 50-something? Yeah, this morning. morning. Wake up? And so it's officially like the first heater day at my house <laughs> and in my car. We are glad to be here with you guys. Happy fall. We're going to have a great show. So we're going to get started right now. Hey everyone, happy Wednesday. I am Marie. If you are joining us for the first time, we are Living Felt based in Austin, Texas. And we like to do this on Wednesdays, just hang out with our friends for about an hour and um, I'm going to refresh my computer here so that I can see all of you. Um, can you see us, Anne? Anne can see us. I can't see us. <laughs> I have to go back in and out of the group. And that way I can see all of you guys. So if you're joining us for the first time, say hi and where you're from. And you will see uh, other people doing the same. So we have friends from the UK joining us today. Lots of friends from the US. Sharon says it's 85 <laughs> degrees. Oh my gosh. That can be pretty common for us this time of year. So we are grateful. Um, hi, Rachel. We're so grateful for the cooler weather. This will be like from here through December, we'll have days where we can run the heater and the air conditioner in the same day. <laughs> we call that winter, <laughs> fall and winter. <laughs> so we have a great show for you today. And I am going to, I uh, want to do a quick shout out or two while everyone is chiming in so remember tell us where you're from and hey may as well tell us what temperature it is where you are in fahrenheit if you know that because we're math is hard <laughs> we have to do math if you give us celsius we have to think about it um so we are getting ready for fall and you know what's so funny is today we're actually planning for the day after thanksgiving that's what time of year it is. So if you are, are going to be in or around Austin, we'll be open that weekend. And you can come play with us on the Friday and Saturday after Thanksgiving. And we're going to have free make and takes and lots of refreshments. So uh, if you happen to be in the area, bring a friend, bring your family. And I want to do a quick shout out to Nikki Collier and Nicola Brown. They're probably not watching. But um, this is these are our tools. We got them back in stock by Nikki and Nikki. And they, uh, we got these back in stock. This is the, what is it, Anne? She's looking uh, puzzled, so I'm going to pause for a moment. We have, we have a message about a low network connection that may affect the live video. Oh, well, right now we're still flowing, so we're just mm -hmm. going to let her, let her ride. If the wireless drops out, we'll just drop right back in. And saying our, our wireless is um, saying it's a little sleepy today. These are our tools uh, by Nikki Collier and Nicola Brown. The company is Nikki and Nikki. We just got these back in stock, and I think that the minimalist already sold out. Is that right, Anne? So we have the big one and the modest one and the prodder. And the reason I wanted to show these to you was look what they did for us. They made us one specifically with a living felt on the handle. So we've decided to keep this one here for classes and for people to use, and we just want to say thank you so much. Uh, Nikki for this gift and your awesome awesome tools. We're all enjoying them very very much um, very cool and Okay, so some folks are joining us. We have some great questions This is what we do you all submit questions and ideas of things to talk about We will absolutely do our best to answer but hey if you have a contribution or an idea Please add it you know, to this conversation. We ask that you go ahead and post your answers here as opposed to linking out. But if you want to chime in on some of your ideas for today's um, topics, please do. And what I think we'll do is start with um, some of the real easy ones. And the first thing would be colors. We had a number of people ask us for a bright white and that was Jane Ward. It looks like I, I don't know how I printed my thing. It was Jane Ward um, and Marjolene and Judy Francis said that they were looking for a really bright white. And so I'm going to show you our whites. And then um, sh let's see who else. Melanie Smith asked for Christmassy green and bright red. And so Anne's going to show you some greens and reds. <laughs> Thank you, Marjolene. 
There's a few, a few dolls, and I'm gonna, we're gonna go through the dolls today. So we'll spend some time on doll clothes, try and formulate your questions um, so that I can answer them because the questions come in really big, open, wide, and I don't know exactly what you're looking for, but we'll try and look at some ways of doing doll clothes today. Let's look at the bright white. Jane says she has her sunglasses on, is, is preparing for the snow white, bright white. And I don't know if this is what you're looking for, Jane, but white is, you know, white's a really challenging color to get. And so first I'm going to show you our fine merino tops in bright white, and I'm going to show it to you next to my skin. Does that focus? Anne's going to tell me when it's focused. Okay, I don't know if I get out of this message if it'll drop the live video. Uh, it, it's focused now. Okay, so this is our bright, this is our bright white. I want to show it to you next to a natural white. And I don't know if, if these lights will show that up, but this is an example. This is an example of just a non, just a natural white fleece on the bottom. Thank you, Renee. Does that show up? I'm waiting for it to show up. We're on about a 15 second delay. Can you see the contrast, the color difference between them? Not very, not very well. If I go further back, does it show up better? If I go further back, does it show up better? So this is, yes, Jane, this is pre-felt. This is our lily white pre-felt and lily white merino top. These are the brightest white fibers we have. And for the needle felters out there, this is our CX2 winter white. CX2 winter white next to the other three. Okay? And y'all, white, white, white is hard to get. You know, the fibers have to be really treated to get white, white, white. And sometimes the, you know, the shadows are, let me see if I have a green fabric. I can, I can put them up underneath. Sometimes the shadows in here affect how they look. But these are our bright, bright whites. Yep, they are really nice. And then again, I'll show them with the natural, yeah, it's hard to see, but up against the natural white. And this isn't our core wool, this is our cotton. So um, this is the cotton white on the bottom, which is a natural, untreated white fleece, just washed, washed and scoured. So we have lots of white naturals, and the brightest whites are these three, winter white and lily white. So in our... Um, <laughs> yeah, winter white and lily white. So if you search winter on our website, you'll get winter gray and winter blue. But if you search winter white or CX2, that's what we call this. It's CX2. Put my hand right there. Um, winter white. This is more for needle felting. And while it is a batting for those of you who haven't tried it, I'll tell you that it's more coarse than our MC1 batting. It's also a shorter fiber and it's going to crumble a little bit. It's going to break off in little pieces. So don't put it on top of something that you want to keep pristine black. <laughs> you know, it's definitely, it's going to make a little bit of debris. It just, fiber gets a little more brittle when it's treated this, this extremely. Um, so the natural whites, uh, I guess I don't need to show those. Does everyone feel like they saw them pretty well? Okay, good. So I'm going to put these aside and I'm going to let Anne show you our Christmassy reds and our Christmassy greens. Here's Anne. <laughs> okay. Let's start with the Christmassy reds. Let's see. Okay, so we're going to start right up here. Um, <clears throat> we've got some kind of darker bluish reds and then the more bright reds on the bottom. So these two here are New Zealand Coriadale. This is cherry red, and this is red. Next, we've got our MC1 batting. We've got mahogany and true red. And we've got merino top here in cinnabar and red. And then we've got the, the two reds in our pre-felt as well. This is garnet, and there goes all the red. <laughs> Uh, garnet and then this one is this one is red <laughs> <laughs> um, it's <is> awesome <laughs> okay and now on to the greens we have got um, this is our MC1 lemongrass uh, MC1 leaf MC1 spruce MC1 fern we've got uh, our pre-felt here in leaf 
then on this side, <laughs> we have got New Zealand Coriadale in fur, lime, and moss. And we pulled actually a color, MC1 Caspian, because we thought it looks really, really good with lemongrass if you wanted a sort of a non-traditional color suggestion. And then there it is with the greens with the true red. <laughs> any any questions or anything coming in? There's Sammy says Sammy Brinkman says it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. <laughs> Adrian in Canada says what's the closest to our old bright white? And I would say that our CX2 is brighter than that. Mm -hmm. So tell her you can tell. Her. Yeah. So Adrian asked um, <clears throat> what the closest fiber would be to our our old bright white, and uh, that would actually be the, the CX2 winter white. I mean, the CX2 is, is actually much brighter than our, than our old bright white. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then someone says, is leaf the same as sprout? Um, leaf, leaf in the pre-felt? I'll grab sprout. Okay. Yeah. I think that, that sprout may have a little bit more yellow more of a, of a yellowish tinge, but Marie's going to grab that and we'll, we'll compare. Okay, uh, Sue is asking what the micron count of the MC1 is, and it's going to be approximately 25. Here's Sprout. Okay, here is Sprout in the merino top. Let's see, let me make sure. Is that showing up well? So, yep. yep. Yeah, I would put them together. You see, they're they're really quite different. Mm. Yeah, hold them. There you go. Hold them there side by go. side. There you go. Mhm. Mm Good. All righty. Any other color combo questions coming through? No, I think we're good. All righty. Okay. Cool. Hey, hope that helps. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Anne. Absolutely. <laughs> Some of y'all have, uh, so thanks for the color presentations. If you want to swing back and see anything as we go, let us know. Oh, look how those look so good together. Mahogany and, and winter white, bright white. This winter white, bright white, it's white. Um, some people have commented about the 10,000, and that is a celebration for 10,000 likes on Living Felt on Facebook. Um, and so that was just a really fun, I guess, mile marker for us to cross was 10,000 likes on Facebook. So thank you all for recommending us and sharing and I'm going to heart you right back. We appreciate it. <laughs> Super fun thing to celebrate. Okay. Okay, good. So that is what we knocked out for colors and I'll let y'all swing us back if we need to see anything else there. I want to jump and um, see if we can answer Sharon Waddell's question and she was asking about making beads and I don't know if this is going to answer her question but it sounds like she wants to make a necklace with felted cords and beads in the middle and she doesn't know how to make the beads have the same size holes to run the cord over and what I wanted to suggest is that um, maybe Sharon an idea would be that you run a wire through your cord. This amazing bracelet was made for us. Let me see if I can get it on. Um, and I actually shared it online. Um, I shared it within the group here, so I wanna see uh, if we go back. Lynette Ambrush Jewelry, and she's on Facebook. And what happened was I sent her a whole bunch of beads that I had made uh, and Sharon said that she wants to make um, beads with design. And my beads were made on a cane and then cut. So these are made with bamboo, tussa silk, neps, angelina, and merino top in the middle. And I just sent them, them to her cut like this without any holes. So she ran wire through the beads. And I have a few pieces, but they're, um, they're tucked away right now because we moved everything around. And because she ran a wire through this cord that I made also, I thought maybe you could consider on your necklace running a wire through here and then ganging up your beads in the middle. 
so that your beads don't need to have a hole big enough for your cord to go through. They would just be need to be able to string them up so that they come in alignment with your necklace. That was a suggestion anyway, because it would be hard to get such a great big hole or to get such a well-formed bead and then try and run this through it. We've strung a lot of things here in the shop and sometimes if things are really well felted, they're really resistant to something running all the way through unless you poke a hole through it with an awl, at which case uh, you'd have to make a pretty big hole to run that cord through. So you could try that. Felt your bead in the first place, poke a hole with an awl, maybe to snip it through with scissors, and then pull your cord through, or maybe consider wiring your cord and ganging your beads up in the middle. Anything on that? Nothing on that. Nothing yet. on that. So maybe, I don't know if Sharon's watching, Phoebe says she's on the road from Taos. She went to Wolf Fest, where she got to meet, Phoebe, did you get to meet um, Judy Chapman and or Ramsey? <laughs> Judy went to Wolf Fest and we have some of our friends there. So we should say a big group congratulations to Judy Chapman. She won like grand champion at Taos Wolf Fest for, I forget the name of the character, but I looked it up. So let me give a heart to Judy. And you know what else? A heart to Rachel Nabbitt. Rachel won first and third prize in her exhibit. And I don't even know where it was. <laughs> I don't even know where it was. Um, uh, so I want to say shout out to those gals and hi to Phoebe and Mac. Oh, Phoebe says she didn't get to meet her. That's too bad. Um, so I, I was thinking I should encourage you all, if you go to a fiber fest, if you go to a meeting, carry your living felt tote bag or maybe wear your living felt t-shirt one day so that may, you might meet some other friends. Um, that could be really fun. Wolf Festival is in, yes, Zozobra. Thank you very much, Renee. Uh, Wolf Fest is in Taos. It's always the first weekend in October. And I want to go back just because Taos. <laughs> just because Taos. <laughs> Love Taos. Okay. Um, we did have a couple questions come through about the beading. Okay. And Melanie Smith said, asks, what about needle felting a bead shape on the cord shape? Yeah, that's what she asked about, and she says that she's only wet felted and not needle felted. So you certainly could, you know, wrap around, wrap around and needle felt it on. But she was looking for a needle felting, potentially a needle felting solution because she's never, I mean, a wet felting solution because she's never needle felted. And so that's kind of what I was thinking. Um, you could definitely needle felt a bead um, around something else. It, it's just n not going to be... She maybe she can't get as many textural elements as if she wet felted it because she's saying she wanted to put designs on it and stuff. So it really does depend on what fiber she's wanting to use, you know, and if she's wanting to use more of the fine fibers and the fine embellishment fibers, then wet felting might be, I don't know, you might get more interesting textural interest, <laughs> surface design. At least that's what I'm thinking. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because the thing is, she's wanting to wet belt Susan, and that's what I'm saying. Taos, Carol, uh, Carol Taos, it's T-A-O-S, is in New Mexico. Okay, so Judy Stadola last time, hi Judy, asked about making doll clothes. Do we make them as separate pieces? Um, do we wet felt them on? Do we needle felt them on? And so I brought a variety of dolls today. I was really hoping to have one more, I have one more doll um, coming, not my doll, someone else's doll, coming. Um, I know, it's a surprise. That, and I wish it was supposed to be here today and it's not. So I'll share that as soon as I, as soon as I get it. But we're going to look at a variety of dolls today and I want you all to help lead the conversation. I'm just going to show you a few things and then I'm going to show you a few maybe uh, things, ideas to play with for outfitting your own dolls. So let's look at uh, let's look at just a few dolls, and we'll start with like a really simple um, simple needle felted dolls. Well, I'll pull up these little guys. I have a couple of little Christmas a couple of little Christmas guys, and this little pixie is in the is in the works. He's fashioned after a vintage. He's fashioned after a vintage ornament, so he's really simple. But what I want to show you is so all of his clothes are a hundred percent needle felted just over his little armature. His hat is needle felted, his shirt is needle felted, his, you know, his pants, his shoes are all just needle felted right in, right in place. But notice how close fitting, you know, his sleeves are and his neckline is and his pants are. This is just wrapping and needle felting in place. 
You can do this for a big doll or a little doll. Um, big doll, little doll, bigger dolls. Just kind of like this guy. They're just kind of needle felted in place. But you can get some interesting things like this little, you can make it look a little more shirt-ish if you're willing to play with the edges. Hi, Sharon. Uh, if you're willing to play with the edges and it can look more like they're wearing a shirt even though it's 100% needle felted on and these are all done in in MC1 so notice this really you know plain neckline but how the bottom of a shirt looks like it has dimension as a like is in um, this doll like this doll you see it looks like she has a little bit of a collar on her dress whereas this one doesn't and someone asked right now, Karen says, can you use pipe cleaners instead of armature? And actually, Karen, I think all of these little, little dolls that I'm showing you, the little Waldorf dolls are done with pipe cleaners. These little, little dolls are done with pipe cleaners. So if you don't mind them being bendy or they don't have to hold on to anything, you can use, you can definitely use pipe cleaners. So I just wanted to show you, like if you look at the difference between the necklines of those two dolls, that even though you needle felt it on, it can kind of look like they're wearing something and you can do the same thing with adding a layer on the front like you can just add you can just add a little lip this is the most simple so this is another Waldorf doll that I made for a class that I taught and it kind of looks like she's wearing an apron but it's very fixed so if you're making tall uh, toys or something just to sit on a shelf this is an this is an option and all we're doing is folding the MC1. So I'm going to show you that real quickly because this is all just needle felted flat, but then we create just sort of the illusion of a layer. Um, thank you, Sam. Uh, so here's an example. This little guy, he's just in the works. I kind of quit. Um, I kind of quit on him, but notice how it looks like he's wearing a jacket. It looks like it has a collar and it kind of looks like he has wrinkles in the back of his jacket. It kind of looks like he does. And these are all just done with the MC1 fiber um, and manipulating it to create some folds. You all are so sweet. Um, uh, so that it looks like it has some folds or it looks like it has, it looks like it has a lip or a collar. This is the most simple way to do that. And to do this, this particular way, all we do is we take this basic you, I don't think you'll have to turn, you'll hold, I'll hold it up. We just take this MC1, and if you've all seen me do our, like our basic needle felting shapes video, I think on there, maybe even on the Scarecrow's video, and some of you know exactly how to do this. On my foam, I'm gonna use my skewer, and I'm gonna make a fold in that fiber, and then I'm gonna needle felt right there so that this becomes flat. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna hold this up here. This is all we'll do is we'll fold this over flat. Can you see that, in? Fold it flat. And then we're going to needle felt a little line so that we have a smooth edge and leave this edge loose. Does that show up? Okay. And says it shows up. So then, like on our little doll, whether you want this to be the sleeves, the bottom of a sleeve, a collar, the bottom of a shirt, uh, a pant leg, something like that, don't if you don't over needle felt it I can just tear it off and now I have that I will put it where's my blue doll here's my blue girl so on my little blue girl I did this is uh, kind of like what I did on the sleeves I'll just make them a little thicker we can give her a rolled down collar by needle felting this in place and then rolling this down you can even cut it or you can terminate the collar here so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna needle felt this backwards. I hope you can see because Ann just left. <laughs> My producer left. I'm gonna needle felt that on right there. It's hard for me to do when I'm not really doing it. And you can work this all the way around your doll. Get it as, if you use your fine needles, you won't make much of a hole or much of a mark. So work this all the way around and then you can fold it down so it looks like she's actually wearing that shirt. I hope you all can see that. Now, you can do that, you can do that for the end of a sleeve 
or when you're doing the end of a sleeve or like um, my Santa hats, some of my Santa hats or something, or even a shirt, sometimes when I put the wool on, I'll just leave it thick. And like here, I'll leave it thick and then I'll just needle felt up into it to make it flat. So that's kind of what I'll do. I'll just make it super thick. But if the bigger you get, that might be a little more of a challenge. So I'd be willing to add little pieces on. Yeah, it's easy, Judy. Okay, so this is needle felting right on the body. I want to encourage you all um, to also save scraps of things, like this little scarf that my guy was wearing. This is just from an old uh, scrap piece of felt that I made some bracelets from, some wrist cuffs from. Save your scraps in a bag somewhere. Save like scraps because you might find that this becomes an apron or a shirt for somebody else <laughs> in your entourage. So save these little pieces so that you have them available. This little guy's gonna be a Christmas ornament. Um, so save scraps. Now let's look at something else. We'll start with, we'll look at a little bit of wet felting and I'm gonna show you all my, um, my first uh, wet felted clothing <laughs> was for this guy. <laughs> Some of y'all have seen him before. Um, this is my first polymer doll, he's not felted. Um, but his pants are wet felted. So he's called the storyteller in his, vision, in his village, so he's got lots of stuff on his coat. He saves, yeah, he picks up stuff and then he tells everyone stories about it. Okay, but I want to show you his pants if I can zoom in here and see that they're kind of fitted and I put some little buttons. Does that show up, Anne? Can you see the buttons? It's dark, maybe. Can you see the... Yes. yes. Okay, so the pants are, were a little big and I just hand stitched them and put the little buttons. So these little pants are made over a resist. Uh, these little pants are made over a resist. And the only thing you got to think about is the size of thing you have to get over to get your clothing on your, on your doll. Like his feet were really big and his pants were really small. So it's really a challenge. And that's why sometimes you see that I leave my dolls without hands or even a head for a while while I think about how fitted I want those clothing, the clothing to be. Because if you don't have hands to go over, I like big hands. Um, if you don't have hands to go over or big feet to go over and you just can put your clothing on and add the feet or hands later, that can be a big help. Okay, um, let me put him down. And I want to show you, we can look at Alaria, um, my little witchy friend, Alaria. I just broke her. Oh. <laughs> I just broke her. I broke her a little swing so she won't go back up there. Okay, here's Alaria, and someone wanted to see how big she is. So can you all see her? Um, does she show up fine? Down or what? Down? So just a little bit. Down? Okay. Okay. This is Alaria. She's a little pixie witch. So I'll try and show you. I know I've already um, posted some images on the website and I'm going to show you how I made her clothes so you guys can see it. Um, her skirt is nano felted. It's just a little bit of nano felt. So you can see it's wool. It's got some, the blue is Angelina fibers in there and the green is silk waist. And then the green inside, there's some green inside, silk and black silk. And really, I just put some little bits because I wanted it to be scraggly. Her shirt, this shirt is just needle felted onto her body and the little lip, just like I told you. Does that show? Mm -hmm. The little lip. Her sleeves are needle felted onto her arm just MC1 black onto her arm and just for fun just because I knew we were going to be talking about this for you guys I cut a little piece of pre felt and needle felted that around and I cut this as a little piece of pre felt I didn't even fold it over which would be good form a little piece of pre felt and just needle felted it right on there so it looks like she's wearing a jacket so if I hold her hair up and see that's just a piece of pre felt that was cut just put right on the body and needle felt it to her to anchor it down where I wanted it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, her hat is wet felted over a resist and that's merino top and her pixie boots are wet felted over resist and I specifically made them kind of big and cloggy 
you know, because I wanted them to look like a pixie would wrap them. And then the wool on the legs is just, you know, needle felted straight to the body. She's got skinny legs. Okay, so um, that this is this is Ilaria's um, outfit. <laughs> Thank you all. Yes, Anne. And we have a couple of questions. Okay. Uh, Sammy Brinkman wants to know: Can you use taffeta silk? I, I don't think, I think taffeta, you might find that taffeta for nano felting is probably too thick, you know, that it's going to be quite resistant to felting. And the little project like this, I just needed the fibers to basically generally migrate through the fabric. So the best thing to do is to make a test piece. We always encourage trying to test whatever fabrics you're trying to felt to. So wet felt with cold water uh, and give that a go. I think I'm going to have to just put her down here. Okay. I don't know if she'll... I mean, she'll hang up. So I'll show some. I don't know if I can get her to hang. I'll show some pictures of her. I'll give me a second. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll show what I used for her. Alrighty. And uh, then Jean Benson also wants to know: uh, Do you draw out a plan for your dolls before you make them, or do you just go with the flow as you make them? <clears throat> yeah, usually I do. I don't. I don't really sketch well. <laughs> I don't sketch well. If I want to draw something, I'll draw, but I don't sketch super well. So, um, but, but I, what I might do, I'll draw out the fabrics or the, the clothing idea. And so that's what I want to show you now is kind of some ways to play with the clothing ideas. So let me show you first. I want to show you the resist used for Ilaria's outfit. This was her little witch hat. That's how big it, it, it started. Um, so this is just done over our resist, and I'll tell Sandy, remind me to go back to the broom. Mm -hmm. um, so this is her hat, and these were her boots. So just like I would make a boots for me, um, you know, I like to do it on one resist. So this, this is the pattern for her boots, her boots and hat. And then her skirt was originally going to be a dress, and this was the pattern. And I chopped it off. Once I was done, I was actually making her a cape and all this stuff. And I decided I didn't want her wearing all, all black. So I just cut the finished dress off. So this would have been like her skirt pattern right there. Basically like that. Okay? So these were done over resist. And here's what I want to show you. Fun with fabrics. <laughs> I want to show you some ideas and things to think about when you're crafting your doll's outfits. And we're gonna start with something as simple and as basic as a circle. So get yourself some cheap fabric. It could be quilting squares or just some other solid fabric, whatever you're willing to work with. Somehow colors speak to me a little more than when I just do a plain white. Um, so get yourself some cheap fabrics that you're willing to just cut up and ruin, if that may be. and. Here's, I want you to look at this circle for a second. So from this circle, you could maybe just cut out, or a circle, you could just cut out a hole in the middle. If you cut out a hole in the middle, take a little naked doll, this is, this is baby naked doll. He's, <laughs> he's getting beat up because I've made him model stuff all day. Um, you can just make a skirt for a doll in Sto Presto. So this would be like your pattern. Yeah, I was gonna see how we're doing that. This would be like your pattern. Yeah, this is just cotton fabric for maybe a skirt. So if you wanted to make a skirt for a doll, you can sort of get what size do I need the finished skirt to be in your cotton fabric, and then you would back up and make your resist, in this case, potentially round or just a half, you know, half size down, um, to make that from. But it's not just a skirt you can make. Watch this. He likes modeling. I'm going to show you a few different things you can do with this kind of a simple fabric. And if you want to have lots of fun, you can come take a class with me in March. <laughs> we'll play dolls in March. I don't know why I like dolls. I like dolls. Okay. He's being good. Okay. Hang in there, buddy. Okay. So you could put it over him like a poncho, open his arms out. And if you wanted to make kind of a coat or a shirt, you could hand stitch those down just like that. Can you see how that would become a shirt? How it could kind of become like a blousey little shirt? You could hand stitch, you could just hand stitch this down. You could roll the sleeves up or cut them shorter if you want, but you can just, you know, you can just play with them in this sense. But wait, there's more. <laughs> let's, let's, let's get off this one and let's look at a different shape. 
Here's a fun shape. It's kind of like a half circle or a half oval, right? A half oval with a little hole in the top. So watch this. We'll put his, his arms are ruined. <laughs> I had plans for you, dude. <laughs> okay, we'll put his arms all the way back. Stretch, stretch back. I'm glad I don't have to get dressed like this. All the way back. We put his arms down. And now we have like a little coat. It's like a little coat with a collar even. So this could be like an over jacket or a jumper, like an over jacket or a jumper, or you could needle felt sleeves on underneath and make it look like it's all one thing. So you could needle felt the sleeves onto the body, make this from a soft felt, and then needle felt this to the body. Now, with a bigger doll, let's look at this, this kind of concept of separate sleeves and top on a bigger doll. Y'all have seen Stash a hundred times, but look, Stash has done the same way, in a sense. He's wearing a, a nano felted tunic over his body. These sleeves were nano felted into just a long strip, and then I hand stitched them to his body. So here's his under, I don't know, can you see those, Ann? Can you see the hand stitching there? Ann's going to try and see if you can see those stitch marks up the inside of his sleeve. And that is his seam line right there. Because yeah. I wanted it to fit close, close, close and not baggy at all. So you can make independent pieces and then sew them or needle felt them onto the body. But wait, there's more. <laughs> I have another shape for you. These are just some ideas, and really what I want to do is kind of open up your, you know, your thought process here and tell you that there's not one way. There's so many ways for you to approach this. So we looked at a half, a half oval, right? Half oval is kind of what that is. We'll look at this triangle. This is kind of a light fabric, but look at this. It's a triangle or a pyramid with the top chucked off, and this will fold down like the other. Well, I made you one, a quickie, quickie one, to give you an idea starter, um, where is it, out of pre-felt. So, this is one piece of pre-felt folded over, if you will. So, here's like a piece of pre-felt. I folded it over, so this is going to be actually the bottom of the jacket, uh, like this, and then I cut this shape out of it. You with me? I needle felted these loosely together and cut a hole here just like in this other shape. So now, I'm gonna put it on my dude, just like uh, our little wrap a minute ago. Put these back on him here. Whoops, his poor body, he's wrecked. Okay, so this allows you to see how you might get something with a little bit sharper edges, and this could be a great little coat for him. And you would needle felt it more. You know, you would needle felt it more. You could trim this. You could put little faux buttons. You could spend the time to do the detailing on him. You could needle felt this more. You could wet felt this shape. Um, so there's lots you can do with this idea if you're wanting some real crisp lines. And a pre-felt would be like a quickie way to get there. That's one thought. And? Looks good. I, I just, I had, I had an, had having, an idea. And think a thought. I, 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 yeah, <laughs> do you want to contribute it? <laughs> oh, no, it just, it, it's going to help on a project I was struggling with. Okay, and yeah. so with this guy, you could also needle felt sleeves on. All right, I am going to, good, I'm glad this is opening your mind. Okay, so now I'm going to jump to something uh, just a little bit different, and some of you have seen this before, and this is how I got to a little bit more of an idea for a dress. So I cut out I just sort of throw my dart at the wall and say, how will this size work? That's why I say, get fabric that you're willing to ruin. Uh, so meaning you get it wrong, you know, if you get it wrong, great. And if you get it right, great. So this is a little dress that's not sewn at all. You could hand stitch it if you really want to. And I made it to see how would this fit on this particular doll. Is this the target size? So I made a target size for my little doll and now I needed to make a resist larger. I was loosely gonna felt this dress. I uh, made a resist larger so that I could nano felt a dress for her. And this is the dress that I nano felted with scrap 
fibers and silk. And like I said, I know some of y'all have seen this, but this was made over this resist. And you know, it's such a small project. You, you know, like Bob Ross would say, <laughs> there's no, there's no mistakes. It's just happy accidents. So maybe it fits and maybe it doesn't. If it doesn't fit this doll, it'll fit another doll. And I'm not going to put it on my boy. He doesn't want to wear it. <laughs> uh, Becky Kowalczyk asks, would that double layer of pre-felt be thick enough to wet felt? Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, you can, you can definitely wet felt those two layers together. So here's my little dress for my doll. And yeah, it's a little big and chunky or whatever, but I'm, I'm fine with it. I was fine with it. This is her head. <laughs> she, she doesn't get to wear her head very often, but that's her little face. And this was the dress for her. So um, these are some ideas for you guys using wet felting or needle felting. Be willing to play with some fabrics and cut out some shapes. Now I do have some other things to show you, um, and I will. I'm going to show you a couple of these other dolls. This, this is just a little pair of boots I made. So you can, you know, make these things. You could then cut these if they're too big for the doll you make. You could cut these and make that more of a tongue and then lace them up. You can bind them, you know. These are big clunky boots. I made them for a troll that didn't survive. <laughs> so make little things. Um, and I want to show you, a, you know, a couple of other things. So this is something simple, and some of you have seen our snowman. Um, like this little scarf was made with the fold technique that I showed you and this you know these are made just splitting the fibers out you wrap it around and tie it you can needle felt it in place so it looks it, it looks even a little more finished than it is but it's just MC1 needle felted and folded um, this little guy I did not make this is made by my dear dear friend Monica in Switzerland but I made his cape <laughs> so she uh, she makes her own felt. This is not pre-felt, so he's just wearing a simple little tunic because he's a house elf. But this little cape, I just wet felted, and I'll show you a basic pattern for that. But Giddy's getting ready for Halloween, so he wants to dress up with us. <laughs> um, okay, so that is a spin-off on our circle. And so to make a cape, you can just cut half, basically do a half circle to make a cape. And that'll make a really great little cape for a doll. So half circle is a great way to go. And the last thing I want to show you, I think, is um, this little doll also I did not make. This is one of my like prized treasures. This is made by Silky Sordil. Silky makes the most precious dolls. And she um, does some wonderful layering. And look, this stuff is just like lightly, lightly felted made in layers and then tacked to the body. This is a little nano felt with cheesecloth, but look at the detailing, like the pocket, you know, and the little stitch across the back where it's torn, the, the coat's open. Oh, here's a better look at that pocket. Precious, and then cheesecloth and the hair. She's like my mini me, I think, like, I, I wish I were her. <laughs> She's just magic, so I had to have her. So um, this is Silky Swordhill and um, love supporting other artists so don't be shy about buying somebody else's art it's good for the soul it's good for them <laughs> it's good for inspiration um, I feel like I've shown everything with the, the little dolls that I wanted to show but well, we do um, have a, the question from Sue Herb Street about how did we make the broom and then we've got a oh. couple of love cards today. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Sammy says, is that a Dobby in the back? It's not Dobby, but it's a house elf. That's what he is. He's a shop elf, actually. So Sue asked about the broom. I thought somebody else asked about the broom, too. No? Okay, so the broom, the, the witch's broom was so easy. I did take some pictures of this. I just found a stick that I liked. And in this case, this particular stick has a little, um, a little branch inside that I cut off that her leg seats in so she doesn't she doesn't fall over um, and I tied her one leg to that so this was just a stick that I painted with a black wash black acrylic paint and water and just made it darker than it is then this part of the broom is merino top 
And what I did is I made, it's merino top and it's also bamboo. That's the, um, what do we call it? The Neptune. That's Neptune bamboo. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was I made these independent little tufts and I actually rolled them in a 50-50 solution of water and powder paw, which is like a fabric stiffener. So it feels stick, it feels crunchy. Yeah, it feels like that because I wanted it to look super crunchy and be like a, a Nimbus 2000, <laughs> kind of. So I made these individual tufts, rolled them in glue, and let them dry. And so they're somewhat loose and somewhat crunchy. And then I just tied them onto the branch with like a shoemaker's cording. It's like almost like a sticky waxed cording. And a little bit of um, actually a polyester thread, which looks like Angelina. It's a metallic polyester thread. And then I put more of the paper paw glue right there. And the same thing up here. I wrapped this with the polyester thread, the black cording, and then put glue on there just so that it really stuck on there. So that's the broom. That's her broom. The fly's good too. <laughs> and then uh, Sandra Howell asked, what about the doll with the pumpkin? I think she's talking about Jax. Oh, Jax. Yeah, Jax. So Jax's clothing is pretty simple because he's definitely a, you know, a little woodland sprite. And his clothes, um, his clothes were just nano felted and then wrapped. So basically I made pieces and parts because I wanted it to look like he's wearing leaves and he has like a vine, uh, a vine belt and his legs too. So all of these pieces were wet felted into strips or smaller chunks and then pieced together and actually just needle felt it in place on the body. Um, yep. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so that's, that's, go ahead, Ann. Um, so that's how his, that's how his is done. And so Deborah Howard says she has trouble with hair and do I have any tips? Now there's lots of different types of hair and I'm just a big locks fan. I just love, love, love locks. But I would say the thing that I teach people when it comes to putting locks on the head, I'll show you. I'll show you all my bald guy. When you have, when you have locks, when you think of, think of your own hair, you know, what happens sometimes is people just want to kind of put it, on the, put it on the head and stretch it over, and that would be the mistake. So I would say you want to give it a little bit of lift and a little bit of life. So I'm going to show you this brown doll up close. Can you see the separations in her hair a little bit? When I do a doll hair, no matter what I'm using, I'm going to, let me take the fuzz off this piece. I'm going to put it opposite of how I want it to go. So put it right in the middle of the scalp where you want it. This is not my preferred needle. I would use a coarser needle. Needle felt that part right there. I hope you all can see this. Anne's not here. And then pull the hair over this way. Kind of needle felt it in place. And keep applying. Keep applying your locks this way. Now from the back, your back you can start your row down here and then the next row and then the next row so that they're all layered. Kind of like this gal. Oh, she's not. <laughs> the head's not attached to the body. So see how her hair is really full and kind of all over the place? I often start with the, fit, the front of the face because that's kind of how I'm feeling. But in the back, start underneath and make your layers going up like this. And that'll make it nice and full. So that is if you want, that is if you want locks. With these littler uh, dolls, I have some dolls with a little simpler hair. Um, I, I still like to separate them into little tufts when I apply them so they look a little more natural on the doll. <laughs> Does that help? I hope that helps. I know these are quickie and I know that there's so many ways to make dolls and I'm just one doll. I'm just one person. Um, so this guy, this guy has more of a traditional, you know, straight guy hairdo, <laughs> kind of a boring, a boring dude hairdo. Um, you can cut the individual hairs and apply them. Stash's locks were actually made. Um, I made them using MC1 and Spice, the 
merino top, merino silk blend spice. And I actually rolled these independent locks, if you will, and then needle felted them to his head and then made his hat on top of that. Beers are the same way. Sue, let me grab a Santa and I'll be right back. So I, I almost brought my other Santa, which is more my favorite, but so beards are done the same way, this guy and this guy, and that is when you make the beard, start underneath, start at the lowest point of the chin and make a row here and then put the row up and then put a row up and put the smaller locks up front. So when you make your beard, build from here and then here and then here, just like you do the hair. Um, and the mustache go side to side, go side to side. So just like we did with those other locks, let's pretend that he has a white mustache. So with the, the mustache, don't try and stretch it all the way across, anchor it right in the middle there. Okay, what else? <laughs> I hope I didn't miss any questions. Um, Okay, I think, do we get everyone's questions? Good. I think so. Um, did, I see one question here from Karen Cott. She mm -hmm. asked, so you use the cut end of the lock on the scalp? I do. Yeah, I, I, do, I think it depends on the kind of doll you're making, but if I'm using locks, it's usually because I want those little curly cues. You know, usually I want to see those curly cues or the natural tip, and so yeah, I'll put the cut end where I'm needle felting in. Yes, but if it's really long, you can fold the lock, like if the lock is much longer than you need, like especially say you're framing the face and you want the shorter locks up front, then fold that lock and needle felt it in the fold. So just needle felt it in the fold right there. I'll show you. You could just, if you wanted both little ends there, just needle felt the, the lock right in the middle. So this lock is a little longer. Now it's gonna tell me if she can see. Needle felt it in the middle and then fold it over. And you'll want to get that part right, like I missed my part, but you can push this over and needle felt it down. I can't see what I'm doing, it's harder. <laughs> it's harder here, but I think you guys get the idea. I hope. And that's how all these people's hair is made. All of, all of their hair is made the same way. And Darlene Samuel asked, uh, what is your wire? Is it heavier than 12 gauge? Oh, uh, no, but I like to double it, right? The 12 gauge is our, is our thickest, yeah, Anne? The 12 gauge. So like this gal is 12 gauge, but it's doubled. So she's really strong. This, guy's, uh, this guy is the same. Uh, I kind of forget sometimes after a while once they're, once they're covered. But like here's the head, this one's 14. The head doesn't need to be too too strong. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Sue Gray asks, um, does Marie sell any of her work slash art? Not right now. <laughs> I like to make to teach and make to give. Uh, yeah, I sold pieces, yeah, but usually not any of these guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, do you get the smoothest through the knitted felting or do you wet felt it too? Marjolaine, when I do legs and arms, I just needle felt. I just needle felt them. Um, and I needle felt, I wrap really tight first, and all these things get handled so much that they get a little roughed up, but I just needle felt. Um, so I wrap really tight first, and then I use our um, fine needles to finish. Yep. All right. Mm -hmm. And then we had a um, couple of quick wild cards. Okay. Uh, Thanks for playing, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it helps. Yep. Marjolaine asked earlier in the broadcast to see the tote bag. She oh. asked specifically if it had pockets. Oh, Marjolaine's asking about the tote bag. Okay, Marjolaine, this is the tote bag. This is an empty one. We have a full one around here somewhere. So it has one pocket, girlfriend, just right up front. It's a fairly deep pocket. I think you could fit a five by five in there. Let me see if that's true. Is that true? Will a five by five fit in this pocket? I just want to see if it's that big. Yeah, so a five by that gives you an idea how big the pocket is. And then there's a there's a big gusset on the bottom. So, you know, it's a pretty good sized bag and the arms fit. 
like fits over your arm. So you can look really stylish. What well, are you good? <laughs> Rachel Carter says she uses hers all the time. <laughs> it's amazing. It's a pretty good size bag, and you can wash it. It'll hold up. Okay, other wild card questions. All right, and Sharon Tanier asked about the bamboo mat. She asked for the dimensions and if we sell a larger size. Oh, Sharon. Sharon, this is our bamboo mat. It's like 11 by 17. 11. It's about 11 by 17. This is the size. What, you know, what I would tell you about this is we, um, we got the best bamboo we could. These are custom made for living felt. They are imported, so the bamboo is really smooth. Um, it's round, um, and generally, you know, it'll wear out after a time, but generally the bamboo is all a really good quality, and the threads are all non-dyed, and the threads are non-dyed, and the bamboo is non-stained, which was really important for us, and we don't carry a larger size. I've looked at it, but the quantity we make when we make bamboo is so great, and we'd have to make the same in the bigger sizes. And honestly, I would need like a great bigger warehouse to house all that stuff. So, and it would be pretty expensive to bring in. So the best thing to do is to look for them wherever you can. The last time I bought them was for myself, big sizes was over 10 years ago at, um, what is that, what is that store? It's like, no, 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 uh, the store, like this, I want to, it's like the Overstock store. What's that called? Big Lots? Big Lots. Was over 10 years ago at Big Lots for like five bucks. So look for them where you can. The non-dyed, especially the non-stained, because we've tested the stained ones and they bleed. They're horrible. <laughs> yeah, 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 good. What do I miss about a fiber felt? Oh, the bag. <laughs> you guys are so cute. Um, so Sammy asked if we use for uh, viscose for wet felting or needle felting. And you know what, Sammy? I don't really, I'm playing with viscose a little bit, but I just have so many wonderful fibers that I haven't really gone to much viscose. I know that some people use it um, for, they like how it feels next to the skin, and I just haven't. So I just don't have a lot of experience with that right now. Okay. And then uh, the last thing that I have is Adrian um, in Canada asks, do you have a video that shows how the needle attachment for the sewing machine works? Oh, no, I don't. Um, but Adrian, did you get that attachment? Because what we can do is, um, is help you with that separately. Um, and we don't sell that anymore, right? So I don't know if she has it, but we don't sell that anymore. Um, it's kind of a cool thing, but um, they just seem to kind of have had their day. <laughs> so if you need help with that, email customer service, would you? And we'll help connect you with the manufacturer um, so they can help you if you want to get that going. Good. Is there any final, final thing that we can do? It's been so fun. Um, I'm missing all these. People are having a side conversation over here. <laughs> oh, okay. A lot of people go into the staff. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Y'all, it's been so fun visiting with you. You know what we ought to do now is uh, give away some prizes. What do you think, Anne? So Hannah's on the phone. She's tied up. Jordan's not with us today. Pam asked, do I have a doll tutorial? You know what we have uh, is an older, an older model. And so right now we just have a Santa doll, um, which is like a complete doll. Um, which is doing the face and everything, but it's it's definitely not my current today's mo It's not my most up to date method. I am working on that. I'm going to be doing a full doll class in March, which is three days long, and that'll be here. Um, so, oh yes, Jenny, I wanted to say hi to Miles. Hi, Miles. In fact, Miles, you know what? Jax told me that he wanted to say hi to you today, so he says hi, Miles. We're thinking about you here, and thanks for joining us for Wooly Wednesday. I'm so glad to know you're there. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, good. Okay, y'all Y'all have just been so great. So Anne got called away by Hannah, and so here's what I'm going to do. Take advantage to tell you that as of right now, we have opened up workshop registration for next year for March, April, May, June, and July. So that means... Needle felting dolls with wet felting costumes if you want. Um, needle felting realistic pet portraits. Needle felting realistic cats, big cats or domestic cats. We're gonna spend three days on that with Megan Neds, getting into deep dive detail, including paws and noses and everything. Um, we also have, <laughs> thank you. Thank
Thank you, Miles. We also have um, Don Edwards coming back. We're going to do this amazing woodsy forest vessel one day, and then that's wet felting. Two days of eco printing. I want to tell you that's going to be awesome. People are already signing up for next year's classes. And then we have in July, Kimberly Pulley is going to come and we're going to spend three days felting faces. So you will leave with a wall hanging. And not only that, she told me that she is going to um, do a drawing and someone's going to win the wall hanging that she makes in the class. Yep. Even if she doesn't finish it, she'll finish it after. But one of the students is going to win her work of art. So y'all think about that because what we've set up is um, a layaway program so that if you do layaway, just read on the workshop page about that. You can do a five pay to do a layaway and you just need to, uh, you just need to pay more than 50% uh, by the cutoff date. Okay, so yeah, save up. But like y'all remember that you can just do the five, the five pay or the 50% deposit and after that we'll start a waiting list. But people have already started registering today. But you guys are, you know, the first, the first to know about it. FYI. Okay, you all ready to give away some prizes? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it just me and you? Yeah, okay. It's just me. It's me and Anna giving away prizes today. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for playing with us. It's been lots of fun. I'm gonna give you guys a heart. I'm gonna give a big heart to all the little ones out there watching right now. I'm gonna give you all a great big heart. Aww. So Miles and all of you, I wanted to do a little tutorial for the little ones. So you know we're gonna do that next time, moms. We're going to do, on our next show, we're going to do a little tutorial on something that you can felt with your baby wee ones. <laughs> okay, let's give away some prizes. All right. How about I draw the first one? Sounds good. <laughs> okay, we love to give away prizes if you hadn't noticed. Anne's going to read it so you know I didn't cheat. Who won, okay. Anne? Jane Ward. Yay, Jane! Congratulations, Jane. You won. Bag number one. <laughs> I was gonna find that bag. Alrighty, bag number one is a, a two ounce roll of merino top in your choice and one ounce roll of merino silk blend in your choice. We picked uh, hydrangea and vanilla just to go with kind of a wintry theme. Mm -hmm. But Even though it's just barely fall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, ask for Christmas ready, Christmas green. So, Jane, your name's in that bag, and you can tell us any two ounce of merino top and one ounce of uh, merino slip blends that you want. Okay, Anne's turn to draw. <laughs> Sharon Waddell. Yay, Sharon, congratulations. I'll see what she won. Oh, Sharon, we talked a little bit about pre felt today. So, Sharon, you win three colors of your choice in our very fine merino pre felt. This is 19.5 micron. You can wet felt it or you can play with it like we did with the dolls. And we picked Marie's alternate Christmas colors for you. Because <laughs> I like that. So, your name's in that bag. Congratulations, Jay. Okay, who's next? Are you, oh, are you picking it? I don't know. <laughs> Let's both read it. Okay. Let's read it together. Alrighty. We, we like to do teamwork here. Are you ready? I'm ready. Darlene, Darlene Samuel! Samuel. <laughs> Congratulations, Darlene. You have won bag number three, and Anne's going to show you what that is. Bag number three is your choice of two two-ounce rolls of MC1. We've got mahogany and bonsai. And then a two ounce roll of the CX2 Winter White. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations, Darlene. Thank you all for playing with us today. Thank you for making Wooly Wednesday so fun. And we just want you to know we appreciate you so much. Take great care of yourself this week. Yes. Right? Absolutely. We're always thinking about you. <laughs> we appreciate you so much, and we can't wait to see what you make. And so thanks to Ashley. Look, here's Austin, our little bat. Ashley Weirich stopped in yesterday. If you're in Austin, if you're coming through town, we hope that you'll give us a shout-out in advance. Mm -hmm. Let us know you're coming, and we're going to sit down and do a show-and-tell with you. So bring your show-and-tells. Until next time, take great care of yourself, you guys. You deserve Bye. it. We love you. Bye.